Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Code Man Movies. Uh, once again, I am late, and I apologize. I have been working and just busy on my days off, and, well, at least I got it. That's what matters, right? Um, so, yeah, guys, we are not going to mess around too much here, because I actually watched a lot of movies this week. I'm quite proud of myself, or not proud of myself. Maybe I'm a loser. I don't know. I don't think I'm a loser, because I love movies, and you love movies, too, don't you? And I'm also talking really fast, because I've had coffee today. Woo! Coffee. Okay, caffeine gets me crazy. I don't know why. I'm not sleeping tonight, probably. Oh, well. Um, drink, guys. I have a Bud Light Seltzer Lemonade. I wanted it in my Batman glass, which is slowly starting to fade. Can you see that? Ooh, Batman glass. Slowly starting to fade. It's kind of old. It's like 10 years old now. Um, also, the can that was in the Bud Light Seltzer Lemonade, it, it uh, was sticky. I think it had cherry juice on it, and that's gross. I don't want to drink from that. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's my drink. I don't know what else to say about that. But without further ado, guys, let's get into talking about movies, shall we? Um, starting out with The Woman King. Um, for starters, this movie has a fantastic cast. Viola Davis is in this, Lashana Lynch, uh, John Boyega, all really great actors that have been in movies recently, and Viola Davis has been in movies forever. Um, this movie is absolutely beautifully directed, beautiful cinematography, beautiful sound editing, great score, um, great fighting choreography. Um, there's a lot of times where you can tell that there's a stunt double or they're cut editing really fast. So you know that the actor isn't quite great at fighting or with their fight choreography. This movie doesn't necessarily do that. You can tell the actors are giving it their all and they are doing a lot of these things, which is awesome to see. Um, I already talked about sound editing and sound mixing were really great in this movie. The sound design in this movie was was really good, in my opinion. Um, the movie is a bit long. It's about two hours and 15 minutes. I think you could easily put this movie to two hours. I don't know why, but for some reason, it seems like Every movie nowadays comes out and it's over two hours long, which is weird to me because it was only like, 2017 was how long ago? Five years ago when Justice League came out and they were like, it needs to be two hours or less so that we can get it in more theaters. So I just, I, I, I don't understand why all of a sudden movies are, are two, over two hour long movie, two hours long when they don't need to be. I just, I don't get that. Um... There's also a love story in this movie that I think helps create the movie's time length. And it's kind of this pointless love story that just doesn't need to be in there. I think they kind of just did it because, well, every good movie has to have a love story in it for some reason, which it, it doesn't. You don't need to connect to us as an audience with a love story. Like, there's other things you can connect with in the story and... It, it's just, I was very bored by that section of the movie. Um, there's also some controversy behind the scene, or not behind the scenes. There's controversy about characters in this movie. Apparently, so I know some things in this movie are real. It's inspired by true event, true events. And I guess there's a, like, a John Boyega's character, I guess, was a turd in real life, and he's not fully portrayed as a turd in this movie. He is a turd at times, but I, by the end, he's a little bit of a better turd. I know nothing about that. I have no comment on that. I kind of, I knew that going in, and I kind of erased that from my brain as I was watching the movie. The movie does not open up with inspired by true events. The poster does say inspired by true events. But for me, when a movie says inspired, it means there are certain things that are true. When a movie says based on a true story, it's still loose, but it's a little more truthful. That's kind of the way I take it. I, I don't know. Um, it didn't bug me. Let's put it that way. Of course, I didn't necessarily know what was going on. I haven't done the research on it. I don't necessarily want to do the research on it because I did enjoy the movie for what it was and I don't really want to ruin the movie for me. I guess it's that makes any sense. Um, and also from what I heard as well is like the writers of this movie just took that character as a character 
and it, it's just using them for dramatic purposes. They're not trying to tell a truthful story. So when someone comes out and says that, I don't know, it doesn't bug me quite as much. But at the same time, a movie like Greatest Showman, I didn't love that movie as much, especially since P.T. Barnum was a complete awful human being. And the entire movie is showing him as this great, amazing human being, and he's the lead character. I think that was the other thing that didn't bug me about this movie. John Boyega's character is a side character. He's not a lead. That's Viola Davis's character. Therefore, if he was an evil turd, well, then he's not in the movie as much. It's not going to bug me quite as much. Whereas something like Greatest Showman, for example, he's the lead character. They are just showing him to be this great guy. Yeah, he's a couple moments where he's a turd, but... It's nothing huge. So I guess it just didn't bug me at the end of the day. Um, but at the end of the day, though, guys, this is a really great movie. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit too long, a little bit of a pointless love story. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's a really enjoyable movie. I love seeing strong female leads. I, I, I want to see female strong leads. I want to see women kicking butt. I want to see women taking charge. I, it's awesome. Let's see that. Keep going, Hollywood. Keep keep doing this. And I think the box office has been okay with this one. I don't think it's been great, but it's been okay. So hopefully we continue seeing things like that. Oh, computer's being dumb. Grab a drink, guys. Your computer's being dumb. Next up, guys. I believe for the sixth freaking time, I went and saw Top Gun Maverick. Um, the movie theater that I usually go to every single week to see movies um, is an AMC and I have the AMC a list and that theater has now closed. Um, and I knew that on Wednesday, I knew it would be the last time I'd ever be going. So I did a double feature. I went and saw the woman King and then I went and saw Top Gun Maverick. I had to end on a, a big high note and Top Gun Maverick is just a very big high note for me. It's very sad knowing that that theater's closed. Um, it sounds like the staff are all going to be hired. It sounds like our local theater is going to be buying that theater. So all the staff are coming back at least to this new theater. That makes it a little bit better. But it was a bittersweet day for me on Wednesday. Knowing that I don't have A-list anymore. Knowing that I'm going to have to maybe not get to see as many movies anymore because of the fact that I have to actually pay for them now instead of 20 bucks a month like A-list is. Um, so yeah, um, when it's on Top Gun, if you've seen any episode of my channel, you know that I love Top Gun Maverick. Um, not much else to say, really. This is just a movie with a lot of heart. It's a lot of fun. It's it's uh, it's just a really, I don't know, it gives you the feels. And that's why it, it was extra emotional this, this last time around, because it was just the last time I'd be going to this theater for a while. And it was the last time that I'd be using my A-list. So it, it was just a kind of an emotional moment. And on that last day at that theater, I was just remembering all the movies I've seen there, uh, all the friends I've went with, uh, friends that I don't even have anymore. Uh, I was sitting in a specific theater where a couple friends and I went and saw a couple movies there. And I was going, uh, Dr. Sleep. I saw Dr. Sleep in this theater. We were in this front row. And... Since I'd seen the movie so many times and I was the only one in the theater, I was like moving around different seats because I was like, we sat in the front row. I got to sit in the front row for a little bit. We sat, I, and I sat in the front row and just watched a few scenes and then I moved around because I just, I was remembering so many different things and it, I can't believe how emotional I was getting because the theater was closing. It's just, it's interesting. Um... So yeah, guys, that's really all I have with this one. This movie is just great, guys. If you haven't seen Top Gun Maverick, go see it. It's a 9 out of 10 for me. It's a near-perfect movie. It really, really is. It's such a good movie. I absolutely love Top Gun Maverick. Next up, guys, definitely take a drink before this. Um, so if you watched my episode last week, you know that I watched Dahmer, the Netflix series, and, of course, now I'm kind of obsessed with true life crime. And I had to watch the conversations with the killer, the John Wayne Gacy tapes. Um, yeah, I'm just obsessed with serial killers for a little bit now. Um, and I've been watching, I've literally watched, like, it seems like every video on YouTube about serial killers. And I've been watching videos of people going to the actual places 
I've been obsessed. It's kind of sad, really. I'm one of those sad people. Um, but it just fascinates me how these people start from this and go to this. And similar to, Ga to Dahmer, no one suspected Gacy even a little bit of being this serial killer. No one had any clue. And that's just so interesting to me that we are so blind to things. It, I've always said I hate Superman because I think it's stupid that he just puts on a pair of glasses and we're just, I have a secret identity. I just, oh, that drives me nuts. But at the same time, I look at something like this and like, it's kind of similar. I mean, it's not as obvious, but it's just insane to me. Um, this is also very interesting to me because uh, John Gacy was living in Chicago. This all happened in Chicago. Um, I haven't been to the neighborhood where his house is. Is it the same house? I don't know if they tore down his house or if it's the same house. I have not been to that neighborhood. Let's put it that way. Um, it's also interesting, like Jeff Dahmer, for example, or example, uh, his parents were, he was kind of abandoned a little bit. He wasn't, he didn't have a terrible childhood, but he was definitely abandoned at times. He felt weird. He was gay. Just all those things makes me wonder if that pressure makes you do these things. And John Gacy was the same way. He was gay um, his father called him fat and kind of pathetic, or called, called him names because he was, like, not athletic and stuff. And I just wonder if part of that was what happened with these people. And it just it makes me appreciate the fact that the world is, is accepting gay people and accepting everyone more nowadays because maybe this is what people, this is, maybe this is why people go turn crazy and turn into killers. I don't know. I, I just think that's very interesting. Um, I knew a little bit about this too. I did know he was gay. I did know he killed about 30 people. I did know he hid it underneath his house. But I had no clue that this man was so well respected. He grilled out for people all the time. He had these parties. He owned this, this business. He met the first lady at the time, I believe, is who it was. It's just insane how well respected this guy was. And the fact that he killed all these people and were hiding them under his house, it just, it blows my mind. And I just can't believe how he managed to fool so many people and how arrogant he was, it sounds like, and was just able to get away with all this. It just blows my mind. It really does. It's so interesting to me though. Um, this is a really interesting three-part documentary. It's two hours and... 45 minutes, three hours altogether. Um, I would recommend it if you are interested in true crime now because of Dahmer the same way I am. Um, not my favorite documentary in the world, though. I was starting to get... I was listening to it, but it was becoming more background noise instead of me really watching it and getting engaged with it the way you kind of want to with a documentary. But it's still really good. I'll give it like a 7 out of 10. It's a solid documentary. Very interesting. I can't wait for uh, conversations uh, with Jeffrey Dom, and I believe that's this Friday that it comes out. Tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow it comes out. Not sure. I could be wrong. Maybe it's next week. But it comes out soon, so guaranteed I'll be watching that soon. Next up, guys, is See How They Run. Now, I went to the movies to go see Bros the night I saw this, and... I noticed immediately when I got in there, first of all, I was the only person in there, which I never like when it comes to comedies. I like some people in there so that we can all laugh together. It's a shared experience. Um, so that was already a eh. But I also noticed the screen was all white. I could hear sound, but the screen was all white. And the trailers played, no nothing on the screen. And then I heard the movie start. I went, this movie's not gonna start. I'm not gonna go out and uh, ask them to fix the screen when I'm the only person in here. That, especially for a movie that's bros, I just didn't feel like doing that. So I instead went across the hall and saw See How They Run because it started about the same time. Um, this is a very interesting movie. It feels a little Wes Anderson to me, but it's not too Wes Anderson to me. Wes Anderson to me is very, uh, what's the word I wanna look for? 
it's a little too high-minded, pretentious. I don't always love it. It's just, eh, he's not my favorite. He's a little too quirky and weird for me. Um, but this movie is very weird. It is very quirky. I don't think it goes over the top with it, though, which is what I really enjoyed about it. Um, this movie feels very similar to Clue. I think it has around basically the same plot as Clue. Someone is murdered. We know the 10 people that are there when this murder happened. And you have to figure out, there's there's two detectives, two police officers, looking to solve this crime. And it's a very interesting, fun movie. I had me guessing the entire time of who the killer was, which is always a good thing. I didn't guess it. Um, and I'm not super good at guessing things anyway, but, you know, I still didn't think there was any big things that made me go, that's the killer. Um, and there's some twists and turns, like um, Saoirse Rona's character suspects certain people, and I kind of believed her. Everything kind of added up for a second there, and then it, it switches around, and I enjoyed this movie quite a bit, actually. Um, it's just a movie that keeps you guessing, and it doesn't take itself too seriously, and it doesn't go too crazy slap slap sticky. It just has some fun, which I really enjoyed. Um, the chemistry of Saoirse Ronan and Sam Rockwell are absolutely fantastic. Absolutely love their chemistry. Um, this movie is nothing spectacular. It's, it's definitely not going to win any awards or anything like that. But it is a lot of fun. And if you like Clue, I think this is definitely something you should check, should check out. Um, I'll give this one a 7 out of 10. Again, it's nothing spectacular. But I did have fun watching it. I didn't think it was too long. I think it was under 2 hours, which... Like I said, that's something we need more of because movies are just trying too hard to be over two hours and it, it drives me nuts sometimes. So see how they run. Seven out of ten, I would I would recommend it if you like Clue, for sure. Next up, guys, a movie that does have way too long of a runtime. Guys, Blonde is three hours long. Two hours, 45 minutes, something like that. It's way too long. Feels like five hours movie is way too long. I was absolutely bored by this movie, guys. Marilyn Monroe is such an interesting person in life, and this movie managed to not make me interested in her at all. It was insane to me. Um, this movie is so pretentious, so high-minded, so artsy-fartsy, this movie is sucking its own dick. It thinks it's so good. This movie thinks that no one can give this movie a blowjob as good as itself. So it's sucking its own dick. That was a very interesting metaphor, but that's me. Um, it does look beautiful. Some beautiful cinematography, great sound. All the technical stuff is good, but it's just so boring. It is so boring, guys. And then it does stuff with aspect ratios. It goes from letterbox to widescreen to full screen. It goes from black and white to color. And I don't understand why. I don't get it. I really don't. It, it goes from time period to time period. It goes from... Sometimes in the same scenes, I think, even. It went from like color to black and white, aspect ratio change. There was no reason for it. I just didn't understand the reason for it. Um, I really didn't. I was confused why it was doing that. Um, it, so, I, it's so hard to talk about this movie because it's just so boring, guys. I hear a lot of this is not even, not factual. I did a little bit of research on the things that aren't factual. Yes. A lot of it is little things, but there are some bigger things that I don't understand why they did it either. Particularly this thruple in the movie. I don't understand why that's there. Um, but it's also the best part of the movie, too. I don't know. It's weird. Um, the only big positive for me for this movie is Ana de Armas. She's absolutely fantastic. She absolutely throws herself into this movie um just absolutely perfect as Marilyn Monroe I just wish it was in a different movie 
because this is terrible. I remember seeing the trailer for this when I went to Chicago this summer and went, wow, this movie is going to be amazing. She is embodying this character. Give her the Oscar, which I still say she needs to be nominated for an Oscar for this role. But I feel like the movie itself could hurt her chances of her winning an Oscar because it is so boring and so slow. And it's just insane to me. The movie, that the, she should win an Oscar, but the movie should win a Razzie. That's how bad I thought this movie was. I, yeah. uh, I'm literally just giving this movie the score that I have because of Anonymous and some technical stuff. That's a 4 out of 10, guys. I will never even come close to watching this movie again. I don't even know that I want to watch a trailer for this movie ever again. This movie was so awfully boring. Three hours of my life just... But hey, I did it for you. Now you don't have to watch it. You're welcome. I'm going to take a gulp of drink because... Good God Almighty. This movie drove me nuts, guys. Next up, Vengeance. Um, this is a very interesting movie. It was written and directed by B.J. Novak. Uh, he also stars in the movie as well. Um, very interesting, dark comedy about a man who comes... Does he come? No, 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 no. A man, his 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 ex girlfriend dies, and he goes to Texas to the funeral. And he, one of the people at the funeral, says this girl was murdered. And B J Novak's character starts a podcast to try to figure out, solve the mystery of who might have murdered her, if she was murdered, in fact. And it's just a very interesting movie. Um, there's not a whole lot else that I want to say about this movie, honestly. I think this movie is kind of going cold. Don't watch the trailer for this one. Um, I think the less you know, the better it is for you. Um, I knew absolutely nothing about this movie, and I'm glad I didn't. Um, I will also say this movie takes place in Texas, and B.J. Novak's character is from, is he from California or New York? Either way, he's from a big city and not this little town in Texas, so they're very different people. And it does such a great job of not making fun of Texans because there's nothing wrong with Texans. They're just very different than a city person. And it does a great job of not making B.J. Novak's character look like a complete idiot because he's from the city. It does a great job of doing that. I don't know how I'm trying to explain that. It's not really diversity necessarily. It's just different groups coming together. And they're not necessarily making fun of each other. But there are jokes showing how it's very different and how it's just surprising to the other side and that was very interesting um so yeah there's some really great re realistic comedy in this movie while also trying to figure out if a girl was murdered so yeah very interesting movie uh really enjoyed this one had a great cast as well uh bj novak's in this uh ashton kutcher's in this movie uh, uh broid holbrook is in this movie a guy from that movie hey you're right there on the poster I don't even know if you can tell, but he's there. Um, yeah, he's in this movie. Great cast. It's just a really solid movie, guys. Absolutely love this movie. Um, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It's really good. Really good. Highly recommend this one. Um, if you haven't seen Vengeance, check it out. It did come out this year. It and then, What did I watch it on? Was it on Paramount? I think it was on Paramount? Was it on Hulu? I don't know. It's on one of the streaming services, if you have all the streaming services. Next up, guys, Hocus Pocus. My film group... I gotta take another drink. My film group, we decided we were gonna do a double feature one night. I had to work that night, so I didn't get to really be a part of it, but I did did it afterwards. Um, so we did Hocus Pocus Marathon. Um, I have seen the first Hocus Pocus one other time, and it was like five years ago, six years ago. And I thought it was enjoyable. Everyone just had talked about it being a cult classic. I did not watch this as a kid. And hey, I just realized this is in Spanish. But that says Hocus Pocus. I'm guessing. I didn't realize that's in Spanish. It's still a nice poster, isn't it? I like this poster. It is a nice poster. Anyways, guys. Um, I heard this movie is a cult classic. I don't remember watching it as a kid. I remember seeing trailers for it. Like on Disney Channel and stuff. And just thinking, eh, not really my kind of movie. Um, and when I watched it a few years ago, I went, 
This is fine. It's enjoyable. Nothing spectacular. I get why people like it. Personally, it's just eh. Um, so I, I watched it again with my group of film club people. A lot of people in the group really enjoy this movie. I'm still kind of eh with this movie. It's enjoyable. It's fun. There's some funny parts. Um, I, I, ew, where am I at? Um, you know, it's nice to see a horror movie for kids. It, there are some scary moments, but nothing too terrifying that'll give kids absolute nightmares. It's just an enjoyable, fun horror movie. And that is something nice to see, um, especially when a lot of horror movies are just bloody, gory nonsense. It's fun to see something just be fun. It does have tense moments, but it's just good, fun, tense moments that I enjoyed. Um, the three sisters are absolutely great. Uh, Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, what's the other gal's name? Kathy Najimy? I don't know her name. I don't know her. Anyways, those the, the three sisters have great chemistry, guys. They are a fun group. They're fun threesome of villains that, that I really do enjoy. Um, and the chemistry, the brother, sister, and then the love interest are all really great. I forgot all the names already because I'm Cody and I lose my mind. It's coming out of my ear, coming out of my mouth. I, I shat it out this morning. I just don't have a brain anymore. I, I'm like the scarecrow. I need to go see the Wizard of Oz. Um, but yeah. The sisters are great. The chemistry, the brother-sister love interest are great. Um, there's some dumb moments in the movie. Some dumb kid moments, obviously. You kind of let it go, but at the same time, there's some really dumb moments in this movie. Um, dumb characters. Some dumb things that happen, for sure. Ooh, I apologize. I really am that tired. Um, at the end of the day, I think this movie's just fine. It's nothing spectacular. It's not horrible. It's just fine. Um, it, when it comes to fun Halloween movies, it, I would say it's great. Because there can be some really bad kid movies out there. Emoji movie. I will always say the emoji movie because the movie is utter Patrick Stewart's character. Um, and then there you go, guys. I don't, I don't hate this movie. Again, it's fine. It's fine. Um, will I watch it every Halloween? No. If my film group wants to watch it again next year, sure, I'll watch along with them. Because it's fun to watch movies with a group. I'll give it like a 5 out of 10. It's fine. It's fine. I don't hate it. I'm not going to go buy it. But it's fine. It's fine. Fine, fine, fine. How many times do I say fine? Next up, guys, Hocus Pocus 2. Like I said, watch this as a double feature. Um, and I enjoyed this movie as well. Not quite as much as the first one. It's not horrible. There's been some movies that are sequels that are absolutely horrible. This one's not horrible. Three sisters, once again, have great chemistry. There are, like, more of them in this movie, which is great. Because they do have such great chemistry. Um, there are three friends in this movie instead of brother-sister-girlfriend duo or love interest duo. Uh, this one is three friends and they're not very good. They, they they almost seem bored. And maybe that's just because the sisters are so great. And they've played these characters before. I'm not sure. But the kids aren't so great. Um, it, there's At the beginning of the movie, there's a flashback when the sisters are, are kids. I would love to see a prequel show or a prequel movie with these girls. That'd be great. Honestly, I think it would be fantastic because they did such a great job. They didn't do an impression necessarily, but they absolutely did great. And you could, I could totally believe that those were the, the, the child of these, or not the child. I could totally believe that they were them as kids. I think you understand what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. There's a couple characters in this that can just be taken out of the movie completely. They just do not need to be in the movie. Um, one character played by Tony Hale's character that I... His scenes were really funny, but at the same time, you could take that right out of the movie. I think the first movie's an hour and a half long. This one's like an hour and 45 minutes. This movie can be an hour and a half long. It's overstuffed. Um... I also hate the ending of this movie. This movie would get the same grade for me, honestly. 
if it weren't for the ending. The ending is so cheesy, so Disney, and so bad. Um, as it was happening, I went, are they really doing this? Really? Okay, that was not a good choice. That was, that was very, that was, wow. Wow. And that's just kind of how I felt by the end. It was just, wow. Okay. Y you did that. That's, that's awful. Um, so yeah, between, oh, there's also another character in the movie. I already talked about that. The two characters. Yeah. I already talked about that. There's a couple characters in the movie that just don't need to be in the movie. Um, so between that, some really dumb moments once again, and that really bad ending, this movie's going to get a, a four out of 10 for me. If you like the first Hocus Pocus, if you absolutely love that movie, you're probably still going to enjoy this movie. Just keep in mind that ending sucks. And the three, the, the trio of the kids is not as good as the first movie at all. Like, it's just mm, not good. Not good. Not good at all. Next up, guys, is Casper... Um, I watched this movie because I just went to Maine. They filmed parts of Casper in Maine where I visited. So I just wanted to check it out. I just wanted to watch a movie. Go, hey, I've been there. I've been there. It's always fun. I don't know why. It's just fun for me. Um, I also remember watching this a lot as a kid. Um, we, our, our parents actually, they, they taped it. And I think it was on ABC Family now known as Freeform. And I remember, I, and as I was watching this movie, actually, I was going, it went to commercial there. And then it came back from commercial there. And I know exactly what parts were like edited out to fill the time slot, which is kind of fun to do, I guess. Um, I don't know. I'm sure some people, it's, it's interesting. Kids today don't even know what that's like. They just have it on Netflix with no commercials. God, it must be nice being a kid nowadays. I don't even remember what I was talking about now. Casper. Um, yeah. Uh, the movie's kind of stupid. This movie is really stupid, but it's a kid's movie. So it's kid's stupid. Um, similar to what uh, Hocus Pocus was, honestly. Uh, Bill Pullman in this movie is absolutely great. He knows what movie he's... In. He has great chemistry with his daughter, played by Christina. What's the name? Pesalisi, Lessie. I don't know her last name. Her first name's Christina. Um, she's great, too, for a child actor. She's doing a really great job. Um, the villains in this movie are absolutely over the top. I forget their names. There's an adult woman and an adult man. The man's a complete idiot being controlled by the woman, basically. And she, If she had a mustache, she would be twirling it. Because the minute you meet her, you're like, you're an evil bitch. Yeah. Um, but like I said, this movie's fun. I, again, talking about Hocus Pocus, how it's nice to see a movie have scary moments, but not be overly scary, gory, all that stuff. It's fun for kids, and it's even fun for adults, because you know what? These characters are ridiculous and over the top, but at the same time, they are kind of scary, because they are evil. Whoa. So, you know, and it's a kid's movie. Um, so it is fun sometimes. Um, the brother ghosts of Casper are a lot of fun. I think they're brothers. Brothers? I don't know. They're ghosts that live with Casper. That's, that's, they're, they're enjoyable. They're mostly poop and pee and fart jokes and stuff like that. But it's a kid's movie. You gotta just go for it. Um, and it's fun for what it is. Um, and like I said, it's kind of the same as Hocus Pocus. It's nothing spectacular. This movie's okay. Nothing great. There's surprisingly amount of a good amount of heart in this movie too. Um, you find out like why Casper died, and just some trauma that his family went through. It, it, it's heartbreaking at times, which you don't expect from a movie like this. But it surprisingly has a great amount of heart. Great relationship between the father and daughter. It's just a really fun, good kids movie, and I remember this from my childhood, and hey, I've been there. So yeah, this movie gets a 5 out of 10 for me. Same thing as the first Hocus Pocus. It's nothing spectacular, but it's a good Halloween movie. 
like this movie this week I've been I was watching a lot of horror movies that are R-rated and it was nice just to watch a kids one kind of take a break from it but still be watching Halloween movies so yeah it's an enjoyable movie if you haven't watched it maybe check it out have a couple of drinks it's it's fun I hate my computer sometimes next up is Evil Dead 2013 Now, I remember seeing this, came out in 2013, and it came out the weekend of my birthday. I think I went and saw this for my birthday with a couple of friends. And I remember leaving the theater going, it's fine. Um, I remember, actually, everyone else in my group really enjoyed this movie. I was just like, eh, it's okay. Um, I think I was the only one that was just like, it was a movie. I saw it. I don't need to see it again, necessarily. Um... But yeah, that, that's what my first experience of was with the movie. I also had not seen the original before watching this movie. I remember I went home and sometime that week, I think, I had watched the two originals. And I think the two originals are fine. They're better than this one, I would say. Not by much, but they're better than this one for sure. Um, this, this, this movie is just about having gory kills. There's not much of a story here. There's an evil demon that possesses. It's, you know the story. The evil demon possesses them and yeah, it, I don't think it does anything super original. It just has some creative, gory moments. Um, the, like I said, the plot is nothing. It, I, I don't know. It, again, watching this movie again, I kind of felt the same way as I did the first time. There's some good tense moments, but at the end of the day, this movie's more about gore, just creative deaths, than it is being scary. Um, Fetty Alvarez, El I can't say his name, Fetty Alvarez directed this, same guy who did Don't Breathe. Don't Breathe was three years later, might have been his follow-up movie, I'm not sure, but he did Don't Breathe, and I think Don't Breathe is a much better movie. It has much better tension, and it's not just about gore. This movie's just all about gore. And that's fun. Don't get me wrong. Like, I enjoy the Saw franchise. At the same time, I'd like some story to it. And there's just not much here. I, there's not... I couldn't tell you much about the characters or anything. It's just... It's there. Um, not a bad movie. In fact, it's a very... Fairly well done good movie. It's a 6 out of 10 for me. It's just not one... I'll probably wait almost another decade before watching it again. Because, I don't know. It's just fine. It's good. I mean, it's good. It's not It's not fine. It's good. It's just... Could be better. I'm ranting about nothing today. Like a lot of movies, I have too much runtime on my podcast. But that's because I'm drinking too much of this, I guess. And I've had too much coffee and I'm tired. And my back hurts. And... Evil Dead 2013, guys. Next up, guys, I went and saw Smile. As you, If you've seen my last episode, you know I was very excited for this movie. Um, just the poster. I love that poster. Poster is awesome. Um, I also saw a teaser trailer. Teaser trailer literally is basically just the one scene of the woman walking past the room, and there's a guy just smiling. And she looks back and is like, hey... Hey, that's like the trailer. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, very excited for this movie, guys. And after coming out of this movie, I gotta say, this is an amazing year for horror movies because this is another one to add to the list. Barbarian and... Um, uh, bu -bu 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 bird, bird, bird. Uh, what's the other ones? Barbarian? What? What are the other movies that came out this year that are horror movies? Trying to blank, guys. Barbarian. Oh, X Pearl. Um, I can't remember any other horror movies. I'm that tired, guys. Um, great year for horror movies, though. Look up horror movies that came out this year. Most of them are really great. Um, this movie is so great. It is so tense. This movie. I talk about Evil Dead. How it's just all gore. This movie does not have that much gore. It's not that bloody. It's just very tense. It's very suspenseful. 
Um, there's some jump scares. Some of them are those bad jump scares where there's really nothing there. But other ones are actual great jump scares where there's actually something there or she sees something there. Um, the premise is kind of a familiar one. I'm not going to really spoil what it is because I didn't know what it was based on that teaser trailer. But the premise is very familiar. That would be the biggest negative I would have with this movie. I think it does a great job of being original while also not having the most original premise, if that makes sense. You would understand if you saw the movie. Um, the scare's intention, though, is what's so great about this movie. It's a horror movie. It's meant to scare you. I was scared at points, which is awesome. Um, the movie also moves really well. It's not super long. Once again, I'm back to that. It's got a nice length, and it, it just kept going. The pacing was great. Um, there's a lot of... There's sometimes when you're watching a movie where something happens... I think I talked about this last week, actually. Something happens. Yes, don't worry, darling. Something weird happens. Florence Pugh freaks out. Something weird happens. Florence Pugh freaks out. Something weird happens. Florence Pugh freaks out. Similar to this movie in a sense. Something weird happens. Character freaks out. Something weird happens. Character freaks out. Something weird happens. Character freaks out. That happens in this movie. But you see the character going more and more crazy. And... This movie does a great job of having you question, is this character crazy? Is she correct? Is this actually happening? What is going on here? It's constantly making you question, whereas Don't Worry Darling was just boring and you didn't flip and care. Um, it's just so well paced. And the jump scares were great for the most part. I absolutely loved a lot of them. Um, there's a lot of side characters in this movie that are kind of nothing. She has a fiancé. Uh, there's her boss. A, a sister. Like, quite a few side characters that are kind of nothing. But when they do have scenes, I'd say about half of them, those scenes do count. And they matter. And they make it worthwhile. And then other scenes where I just don't think there's chemistry there in a sense. And you just don't buy that these characters even really know each other. They seem like actors meeting each other for the first time almost. So there is that. Um, but again, it's the tension. It's the scare that, that make this movie so great. Um, I almost feel like I need to see the movie a second time though. To see if those side characters, um, the, re the re repetition changes my perspective after seeing it a second time. I don't know for sure. Maybe in a second view, this movie will be a, a little less enjoyable for me. First time around, though, I was absolutely having a blast with this movie, though. Um, yeah, honestly, with this movie, I would say don't watch anything. You've seen the poster right here, right now. This is what you're seeing. And that's all you need. That tagline is great, too. Once you see it, it's too late. I like that. That once you see the movie, you'll understand why that is such a great tagline. Um... In the end, guys, really enjoyable movie. Like I said, some dumb characters. They're not dumb characters. Just side characters that don't have a lot of meat. Um, and then it is... I don't know what else. It's not quite a 9 for me. I gotta make sure it's an 8. Because that is what I give this movie is an 8. But there's just some side characters that aren't all there. And there is... It's kind of generic. That would be the thing I'd say it is. After you see the movie, you kind of understand. It's not super generic. But it is an 8 out of 10 for me. I need to take another drink. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. All right. Next up, guys, bros. I was very excited for this movie, guys. Um, you know, like, I, I want women to be strong leads in movies. I want their... I, I want for gay people to be accepted. I want for everyone to be accepted. We are all going through life. We're all struggling at times. We're all having happy moments. We're all feeling alone, scared, all that stuff. We all feel these things. So I think we should all have our own movies to look up to. I think we should all have our Black Panthers. We should all have our own bros. We should all have our, our bridesmaids, all that fun stuff. We all need movies that have us in it so that we know we're not alone. I think it's very important. Um... So yeah, I was very excited for this movie. I like Billy on the Street. Um, I've been that's been something I've watched a lot lately because I just discovered Billy on the Street. 
I was excited for the movie Bros before I saw Billy on the Street, and then I watched Billy on the Streets on YouTube, and boy, was I getting even more excited for this movie. Um, I love the director. He made Forgetting Sarah Marshall and uh, the Two Neighbors movies. I absolutely love all three of those movies. They're hilarious, and I love that. Um, and I love that we're slowly moving into a world that's accepting. I like that. I really do like that. I want the LGBTQ community to feel accepted and feel like they're part of the world because they are a part of the world. So they should be accepted. Um, this movie is hilarious, has a lot of heart. Um, it's very well written as well. Billy Eichner and the director Nicholas Stoller wrote it. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely love this movie, guys. Um, yes, this movie does have gay sex scenes. There's a couple foursome scenes. Both those scenes, well, the couple, the few of the scenes are humor. Like, you're laughing at it. So it's not as, I'm not going to say uncomfortable. But at the same time, you know, when it's like gore almost. Some people don't like gore. It's like, well, you know what? This is a better analogy. You don't want to see your parents having sex. So you don't necessarily... So it might be uncomfortable for some people to watch other people, to watch two men having sex. You know what I mean? It makes those scenes funny. It, and at the same time, it's it's not making fun of gay people or anything like that. Billy Eichner wrote the movie, so he understands what's funny about it. And it makes it funny. That makes sense? I hope it makes sense. Um, yeah, Guys, I'm just really glad this movie exists. I, I really do. Um, this movie has not been doing well at the box office for its first week. Um, I want it to do better. The things Billy Eichner kind of said this week end about it, week about it though, whatever, whenever he did it, I don't think it's going to help a box office. He basically called everyone who hasn't seen this movie in the first week pieces of crap, which I didn't see this movie in the first week and I saw it on Tuesday. So therefore I guess I'm a piece of crap and I'm a homophobic piece of crap, even though I love this movie. Yeah, so I don't think he said the right things there. You know, this movie, maybe, I hope, honestly, I really do hope that it just keeps going. Kind of like Top Gun Maverick, even though Top Gun Maverick opened big. Or maybe The Greatest Showman's a better example. Because Greatest Showman didn't open up huge, but it just kept going for a week, for a week, for a week, or a week. We don't have a lot of comedies out there. Maybe this movie will be the comedy that make people go out to the movies. Um, and like I said earlier in the video, I was going to go see this movie sooner and I was going to be the only one in the theater seeing it. And I'm so glad that the screen didn't work and I went on Tuesday when there was more people in the crowd because I enjoyed the experience of laughing with other people. And I was happy to know that I was not the only guy there. Um, I think there was some gay people there. There was also couples there. It's great to see diversity there, guys. It was great. I want more of this. Let's get more of this. Go see bros so that we can have this. Billy Eichner was upset, a little butthurt, and he said some things on Twitter. We've all done that, haven't we? Come on. Um, so yeah, I encourage everyone to go see this movie, whether you're straight, gay, whatever the case may be. Go see this movie. It's really an enjoyable movie. I had such a great time watching this movie and I'm going to give it the same thing I think I've given Neighbors and Forgetting Sarah Marshall, like a 9 out of 10. This is such a good comedy. Um, I think there's some jokes that, of course, don't hit like all movies do. There's a couple scenes. Also, this is produced by Judd Apatel. Judd Apatel, his movies always go a little too long. This movie goes a little too long and gets a little too cheesy at the end, similar to what Trainwreck did. It's sweet, but it's a little cheesy. I wouldn't give it like a full point off. I would say the fact that it's too long and there's some cheesy moments, that equals one point. That's why I get it down to a nine. I always have to be technical with my points. I don't know why. I'm Cody. This is what I do. So yeah, guys, those are all the movies I have seen this week. Are we at an hour? We're at 50 minutes. I, I went pretty good today. Maybe I talked too fast because, again, I'm a little hyper. I've had caffeine today. I don't always have caffeine. That's the thing. Um, movies coming out this week, guys. Amsterdam. I love the cast for this movie. I mean, look at these all. We have Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, John David Washington, Chris Rock, Anna Taylor Joy, Zoe Del Zeldana, Mike Myers, Michael Shannon, Tim Timothy Oliphant. I don't know who that one is. Taylor Swift. I don't know who that one is. Don't know who that one is. I know that one. Rami Malek and Robert De Niro. 
That's a huge cast, guys. Um, usually when there's movies with that big of a cast, they're bad. Reviews are in for this movie, and it is not good. Not good at all. So um, I'm going to go see it probably at some point. I don't know that I'm going to do it right away, especially since I don't have A-list anymore. It's going to have to be $5 Tuesday for me. And I don't know. Just the reviews making me not like it as much. Making me not want to go as much. Um, same director as Silver Linings Playbook, which I really enjoyed. And then he also did American Hustle, which I, which I did not enjoy as much. Everyone liked that movie, though, for some reason. At least the Oscars did. Um, and then he did Joy, I think. I still haven't seen the movie. I still have not seen that one. Um, so David O. Russell is very hit or miss. When he hits, he hits. When he doesn't, he doesn't. My excitement level for this one, it's like a 4 out of 10, guys. I The cast is great. The story seems great enough. They're accused of murder, even though they didn't murder someone or something like that. That's interesting enough. But it also sounds very much like See How They Run, in a sense. I don't know. I 4 out of 10 excitement. I'm just not that excited for this one. I'm really not. Um, but if there's no other movies playing that I want to see, I might go see it. If it's bad, though, that $5 is it's going to hurt, which is weird. Because you know what? I think about this a little bit. I was seeing maybe four movies a month with my A-list since the movie theater is so far away. Um, that's $5 a month, or $5 per movie anyway, for that 20 bucks a month. So really, it's not that big of a difference because I was seeing some crappy movies for that amount. So maybe I just got to get over that. But it just, you know, when you pay all up front, it's like it's free, basically, but it's not. You still technically paid for it. You get what I'm saying? You don't get what I'm saying. Maybe you get what I'm saying. Alcohol. Next up, Lyle Lyle Crocodile. I saw this movie trailer and I went, wow. They 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 wrote this. It's from Academy Award nominated songwriters from The Greatest Showman. Sean Mendes is playing the crocodile. Javier Bardem's in this movie and Constance Wu. Wow. I will not be seeing this in theaters, guys. Although I'm visiting my cousin in a couple weeks. Maybe he don't wants to go see this movie. He's 10. I hope he doesn't want to see this movie, guys. I'm not excited for this. This is a 0 out of 10. I can't believe this movie got made. I can't believe they got flipping. I think Javier Bardem's won an Oscar. I think they got an Oscar winner to be in this movie. Why? I hope he got paid a buttload of money. Next up, guys, Hellraiser. Um, I think I've seen one Hellraiser movie, and I don't remember much about it. But it's going to be on Hulu, so I'll probably see it. Um, why not? That is, a, I love that character design. He looks incredible. That's such an image, you know? The nails in the head. That's that's cool. Yeah, that's what all I got to say about this one, guys. I'm not super excited for this, but I know it's coming, and I'll probably watch it. I don't know, a 4 out of 10. I'm not super excited. I'm more excited than Amsterdam because this one's going to be on Hulu and at home. But at the same time, I kind of wish it was in theaters because I like seeing horror movies in the theater because it's great to have that that fear together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think that's the end. Hey, guys, we're at the end. Um, what did, did I get? It? I, I try to get this under an hour because, hey, this is actually shorter than a lot of videos. I talked about a lot of movies tonight. I must have went through some of them kind of fast. Um, anyways, guys. Thank you so much for being patient about the fact these videos are up late. Um, views are still very nice and steady. So I, I thank everyone for watching this. I'm getting a couple likes. Thank you guys if you do like this. And you are enjoying this. If you are enjoying this, great. Thank you so much for listening to me rant. And thank you for being my therapist because you are my therapy. Um, I apologize with me not getting videos out on time. My computer's doing something weird again. What the hell? I think it's haunted. Look at that. Do you guys see this? That mouse is moving by itself. I am officially freaked out. <laughs> I think I'm going to go lock my door. <laughs> okay. Um, it's still doing it. I heard a thud too. Okay, guys. Um, I'm officially creeped out. 
So I think I'm gonna go get my bathtub. I'm gonna go lock my door first. I'm gonna go get my bathtub and I'm gonna maybe have a knife. I don't think I don't have a gun. Grab a couple knives. Anyways, guys, I hope you have a good one. And if I make it to next week, I hope I will see you next week. Wow, is this movie? Are you seeing this shit? Okay. Anyways, guys, have yourself a great night. Um, keep doing you. Enjoy life. Um, hopefully I will have my video up by Tuesday this next week. We'll see what happens, though. Um, anyways, guys, until then, I'm going to shut my computer and hide in the bathtub. Have a good night, guys. Bye.